This video is about integrating trig functions that involve at least one odd power of sine or cosine. Let's start by evaluating the integral of sine to the fourth x times cosine x dx. This integral is a good candidate for u substitution. If we let u equal sine of x, then du is equal to cosine of x dx, and we can rewrite the integral as the integral of u to the fourth du. This integrates easily to one-fifth times u to the fifth plus c, and I can convert things back to x by plugging in sine of x for u to get one-fifth sine to the fifth of x plus c. The next integral, the integral of sine to the fourth x times cosine cubed x dx, can also be handled with a similar u substitution with a bit more work. First, I'm going to rewrite the integral as the integral of sine to the fourth x times cosine squared x times cosine of x dx. I'm rewriting the cosine cubed of x as cosine squared of x times cosine x in the hopes that I can use cosine of x dx as my du, like I did in the previous problem. Now if we have du as cosine of x dx, we're going to need u to be sine of x. But unlike the previous problem, I can't just replace sine to the fourth x with u to the fourth and cosine x dx with du and be done, because I've got this cosine squared x hanging around that I need to deal with. I wish I didn't have that cosine squared x. I wish everything else over here was just written in terms of sine. Now, as you might realize, it's not hard for me to get my wish. We know from the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to one, so cosine squared of x can be written as one minus sine squared x. Making that substitution, I can now rewrite my integral entirely in terms of u and du. Now if I multiply things out, this becomes easy to integrate. And I get one fifth u to the fifth minus one seventh u to the seventh plus c, and I can rewrite this in terms of x. To recap, we separated out one copy of cosine x to be part of our du, and then we converted the rest of the cosines into sines using the Pythagorean identity. This allowed us to do u substitution with u equal to sine x and evaluate the integral. This same technique with some modifications works on a lot of other problems. In this next problem, if we tried separating out one copy of cosine of x to be part of our du, we'd run into problems because we just have one copy of cosine x left and we can't use the Pythagorean identity con to convert a single cosine into sines. Well, I guess technically we could do something like this, but then we'd have to introduce a plus or minus sign and a square root sign into our integrand, which would make things difficult to integrate. It's a lot easier if we can just use the cosine squared x is equal to one minus sine squared x identity to replace our cosines with sines, but this identity only applies if we have an even power of cosines left over that we want to convert. So instead of trying to save out a copy of cosine x, let's save out a copy of sine x instead. So we'll rewrite our integral as the integral of sine to the fourth of x times a sine of x, and we'll keep the cosine squared x and the dx. Now we want the sine x to be part of our du. So let's set u equal to cosine of x. That way du is equal to negative sine of x dx, and so sine of x dx is equal to negative du. Since u is equal to cosine x this time, we want to replace all of our stray sines with cosines. We know that sine squared of x 
is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x by the Pythagorean identity. So let's rewrite this sine to the fourth as sine squared of x squared. That allows us to substitute in 1 minus cosine squared of x for sine squared of x. And now we can replace everything with u's and du's. I'll bring out the negative sign and multiply things out. 1 minus u squared squared is 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. And this multiplies out to u squared minus 2u to the fourth plus u to the sixth. Now I can integrate, distribute my negative sign, and finally plug in cosine of x for u. That completes this problem. In this video, we used u substitution and the Pythagorean identity to evaluate integrals with at least one odd power of sine or cosine. The idea is to separate off one copy from the odd power. That one copy becomes part of our du, and the remaining even power gets converted using the Pythagorean identity. In this case, we convert sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. This allows us to do the u substitution and evaluate the integral.